We're back! Hi, my name is Phil Chambers from What Culture, and I am joined with Gareth Morgan, and we are here for a bit of the old afternoon news. Exciting, right? But before we get going, uh, make sure the links to all of the uh, stories are in the description below, and also make sure to like the video, share the video, and comment below what you think of all of the, today's stories. But I'm going to start off with the real reason that WWE banned the buckle bomb. Uh, now the Wrestling Observer did talk about this um, and they've said that due to the backlash that WWE received after Nia Jax did her buckle bomb to Kyrie Sane, they decided that the risk wasn't worth the reward anymore and they've banned the buckle bomb due to Nia Jax officially. Um, it's been apparently talked about for years as a move that's a little bit dodgy. Um, obviously Seth Rollins took out both Finn Balor just as he'd won the Universal Championship and Sting, which is two quite high profile people to be taking out with the same move. Um, and yeah, and then obviously it's all resurfaced its head with the Nia Jax Carrie Sane thing with Carrie Sane saying she wasn't ready, but Nia Jax doing it anyway. Um, luckily Carrie Sane wasn't injured on that one. Oh, the Nia Jax had a, another pop at her a couple of weeks later. She gets the job done. Um, she gets the job yeah. done. But that's it, it's officially banned, and it's because of the backlash that WWE received, which is quite an interesting wording, I think, there. Yeah, and I'm hearing a lot of uh, talk of, there was, there was a fear that when uh, you were released in the Booker Bomb that you had no control over your body, and that meant that they felt there was a massive danger of, uh, I know they said backlash again there, it's just on the brain. <laughs> it's uh, next Sunday, just in case you didn't know. But uh, whiplash, like there was a big fear of whiplash yeah. um, because they were smashing into the turnbuckle without really, you have some control, obviously you can bring your arms back to, to keep an eye, but you can't really control your head if you're being, I don't know if you've ever been buckle bombed, Phil, but it's one of those things <laughs> I, I imagine personally. where you're being, well, if you've been slammed, you know what I mean? It's one of those things when you yeah. Yeah. being slammed it's very hard to keep control of your head when you're being moved with such a force if you're yeah. not prepared for it either and you're saying you don't want to do it that's uh it's a recipe yeah, for disaster worse. it's it's a difficult one to set up as well because neither of you can actually see where the turnbuckle is so it seems like a bit of a mad move to begin with when the person even the person doing it doesn't like i guess you can kind of maybe look to the sides to see how close the ropes are but you're never going to really know that you're there in the perfect position it's like doing uh, a super kick with your eyes shut yeah, exactly. Just, just, yeah, is it there? Are you, are yeah. you alive? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's it. No more buckle bombs. That is, that is it. Um, so, in terms of... I don't know, how am I going to jump into this one? So, <laughs> uh, things things that are changing in WWE. Here we go. So, nice. that, that, that's like a change. That's, that's gone. Um, it's a change for the better, obviously. It's um, a step towards uh, having... Uh, talents back in, new talents into WWE. Um, we are now getting classes. Classes are back in session uh, for WWE recruits, uh, newer recruits to the Performance Center. But, my friend, there is a change. There is a big change with these because they're not going to be in the Performance Center right now. There's not going to be uh, physical contact, obviously, due to the current global situation. Um, these are all being done by video classes. Um, so, like many of our, ourselves all around the world, we're doing video classes and video um, Zoom calls and the rest of it. They're going to be doing those um, with their coaches. They're going to be doing training classes. So I don't know if that's walkthroughs. They're going to have people do, um, doing drills. I myself, when I've been doing a bit of martial arts training, I've had a trainer send me videos of um, sparring sessions where they've held the pads up and you do a bit of shadow boxing. That's quite fun. I uh, don't know how you could do that really with wrestling unless you get a cushion on the floor and start wrestling with it, but we'll figure that out. <laughs> um, and then also, We've all been there. We have been there last night. I'm not going to talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, so also they said they're gonna, they've been watching old matches and critiquing them which I think is really necessary they should be well I, I hope that they will be doing that um, anyway because I think it's a brilliant way of learning um, a, lot, a yeah. lot about yourself your own matches but obviously other matches what made them so good And uh, but it's also been said that these classes are not um, the people from the performance centre who have been um, the planted crowd let's say um, recently for the, the matches and the, the shows that we've seen to be put on in the PC recently they are not uh, required to do these lessons they've not been doing them um, but yeah they, they've also said that they've not had everyone at once in the classes which said, again I think is a pretty good idea because you've got like 50 students with loads of little cameras going off and they've got latency issues not a good thing. Um, so yeah. they've been broken up throughout the day to get more talents involved with uh, various different coaches and using the specific skill sets at different times of the day, which I think is all good news. What do you reckon? Yeah, totally. It's They need to do something to keep it going, keep the training sessions going. I know a lot of different places have been doing this as well during lockdown. I know uh, Mike Quackenbush, who teaches uh, the Chikara Wrestling School, um, 
he's been doing a bunch of things online. I know Simon Miller, he's actually joined a few, not teaching, but like being taught by. Um, there's loads of things you can do on online now. You can do like theory, you can talk about um, like psychology, like you can analyze matches and things like that. It doesn't, it's not all about actual in-ring things. They can do promos, they can cut promos for each other online. Um, loads of stuff like that. They've got to, yeah, keep keep the training going. It's, it seems like a, a logical way. I honestly don't know why they haven't been doing this from the beginning. <laughs> Better late than never. <laughs> Indeed. Um, talking of people who are going to need a lot of training, that sounds a bit harsh. <laughs> run, uh, run with Jinder, it. <laughs> Jinder Mahal, uh, he's talked to Instagram. He's obviously uh, out on injury, uh, but he went onto Instagram to announce that he's had to have a surgery again on his knee. Uh, he said that, unfortunately, I had to go under the knife again to fix some knee issues. The journey has hit a speed bump, but I will be back stronger than ever. Uh, it obviously showed him with his leg in a cast or whatever it was. Um, really, really unfortunate timing for Jindo. He'd obviously just come back. He had that match against uh, Akira Tozawa that he won. Um, and there's reports going around that it, he was going to be leading into some kind of world title feud with Drew McIntyre. Now, I wasn't, wouldn't expect him to win that, but that's a really logical story that they can do. Um, both people who got fired from 3MB went outside, made themselves look massive and big and strong and came back better than ever, uh, both going at it. And I bet that actually would have been a really fun feud. I think Drew McIntyre would have definitely got a kick out of that. Uh, and on this, he seems to be going through like a feud a month, just like the next person, the next person, the next person. So I assume he would have been one of those people, which would have been quite fun. Um, so yeah, there's, there's no word yet on sort of how long he's going to be out or how severe the injury is, but it's just really bad timing and really unfortunate for Jinder. Um, we obviously wish him the absolute best and hope he gets well soon. Definitely. Um, Jinder's one of those guys I don't think he'd be damaged that much by being a filler feud for somebody like Drew. I think if anything, it might yeah. help him a little bit, gives him a bit more star power to be put up in that um, high ranking again. Um, he seems like a, a really lovely dude outside of the ring, so just wishing him a speedy recovery. Uh, knee surgeries are not fun. I've had a lot of knee surgeries yeah. in my family. They're, they're not easy things to overcome, so fingers crossed he gets through it. You also know that he's going to train like absolute crazy and rehab this thing and come back. Like He's actually going to be stronger than ever. He's definitely one of those guys. So, yeah, so good, yeah, good luck to him. And right, our next piece of news we're going to talk about right now is um, speaking of people who had to leave WWE, big, very, very different circumstances that, that when uh, the 3MB members left and everything else, it wasn't... It's, it's a better link than mine was, you're fine. <laughs> oh, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. Um, yeah, so Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, there's been a lot of talk about them, uh, where they're going to go next. Um, weirdly, the other, the other day, we had an a Impact Wrestling promo package hype video that had a lot of ex WWE superstars who were recently released they were in this video um but a couple of people who are in it right now don't seem like they are going to be popping up in impact so it's a, it's a weird move because drake maverick was in it and he's obviously just signed his obviously contract not. so yeah. it's not looking like that's going to happen ec3's been just hinting at everything really it looks like he's just going to do whatever the hell he wants which is i mean i'm all here for that because all of his videos yeah. have been brilliant uh, Eric Young was in that video, uh, Mike and Maria Canellis was in it, uh, Kurt Hawkins was in it, and um, then obviously yeah, Gallows and Anderson were in there as well, and there was a Bulgarian flag apparently for Rusev, so I'd be surprised if Rusev popped up there, well he wouldn't be by the name of Rusev anyway, but I would be surprised. Um, so the big thing coming out of this is now they don't feel, well the Wrestling Observer doesn't feel that uh, Gallows and Anderson are going to be popping up on Impact specifically. Um, they think that they're more likely going to head over to New Japan Pro Wrestling. If they were to work for a US show, they probably are going to work for one US company um, in between tours. There is still talk that it could be Impact, potentially. It won't be exclusive to Impact, but they could pop up and maybe... like. Well, I think their, their non-compete clause runs out on the 15th of July, and then Slammiversary is on the 18th of July. So they could feasibly pop up. I think that's maybe why uh, they put them in that video. But I think more likely, I, I don't know, you could see them because of, of the relationship that is being formed right now between AEW, where they're dropping people like to go over to New Japan and come back and just do little runs. Potentially, it could work another way. So if they did sign fully with New Japan, New Japan could say, yeah, you can go back over to AEW every now and again, just do a few, a few little programs. I'd love to see, which has been hinted from the FTR, a little few between them, see what they can really do when they, they're stripped of the chains of WWE, where they, they're not overproducing the rest of it, and just see what kind of match those teams could put together, because I think we'd see an absolute banger if they were outside of WWE. Yep. Um, yeah, obviously FDR teased on the Cornet podcast that uh, they would like to work with them. 
Um, but I mean, New Japan just seems like the spiritual home for those guys, doesn't it? And it's yeah, if they, if they, I think that's the best situation for them. If I mean, if they still want to go to Japan, <laughs> uh, they might be at completely different points in their lives. Um, but yeah, to have that home base, New Japan being your one true home, and then being lent out to Impact and or AEW or whatever it is for little runs, I think that'd be a perfect situation for them. Um, I know Tamatonga, he obviously wants them back in the Bullet Club. Uh, they'd be welcomed back with open arms in New Japan and the Bullet Club, I imagine. Uh, and they've, I've been counting the days down to, uh, to when they can finally get out. I think there's 23 days, I think, is the latest. Um, so yeah, I'm very interested to see what they do. Uh, FTR versus Anderson and Gallows in New Japan it would just be incredible. <laughs> uh, but yeah, should be good fun. Looking forward to it. Indeed. Uh, finally for me, uh, Tony Khan is ramping up this next week's AEW Dark. He has announced on Twitter that John Moxley is going to be in a match on AEW Dark. He's going to be wrestling Robert Anthony, who has previously tag teamed with Sean Spears and they've lost a while ago. Uh, but he's also CZW World Champion and uh, the NWA X Division Champion has been. Um, so yeah, it's going to be him versus John Moxley on AEW Dark, the World, AEW World Champion in action. And Taz did a little tweet afterwards as well, just saying that he might bring a little friend along with him to check out the action. Uh, so that should be interesting. Free wrestling. Gotta love it. And that's it. I mean, I think it just gets people... They know what they do in AEW. They're trying to get people, more people to watch Dark. And I think that's, that of course. instantly makes anybody think, oh, I might tune into this. And there's, there's a chance I could see not only the AEW World Champion John Moxley, but Brian Cage could pop up as well. He's one of the hottest properties, the newest properties in the company. So good piece of business. I, I see yeah. where they're coming from. I'm here for it. Good fun. Is that everything? Have we, have, we got um, a... have we mentioned... I, I believe we've not mentioned specifically... Um, did we mention the Jinder Mahal story about his... Did we mention the Jinder? We yeah, did, yeah, 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 yeah of course yeah, we did. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we did, yeah, we'll cut that wrong. So, <laughs> so thanks, for, thanks for paying attention though, Gareth. <laughs> Sorry, I was really looking at it, I was like, it's good. skating over that. I think I probably even said something about my bad. It's been a long day, Phil. <laughs> We're done, I'm ending this video, I'm done with you for the day. <laughs> Sorry. God, you, you leave for one week and then you come back like this, but you, you're a disgrace. I know what I am. Anyway. Uh, we're going to end this now. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Make sure to comment on the video what you think of all of today's stories. And like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to follow me, you can follow me at Fill My Chambers. I'm not going to say where you can follow Gareth. <laughs> That's your punishment. <laughs> but you can follow everyone at What Culture at What Culture WWE. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. What a fun day it's been. Um, <laughs> I can't Go wait for next Saturday. Yay! <laughs> uh, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, goodbye. Have yourselves a bloody good day. Bye. See ya.